Hello, it's a very lovely, lovely good morning from here in Chali and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine. And as always, we also pray to the Almighty to keep you always in finest of health, shape and of course in spirits. And we also pray to the Almighty to give you supreme amount of success both in your personal and professional life later on when you are going to move into. So, with such prefacing note, we start today's this particular session and in this particular session, honestly speaking, we are going to start a chapter with which you are already familiar with so many times, correct, especially in your past education, in the past phase of your education, I should say that way round, I'm talking about issue of share capital. So, issue of share capital is the chapter which we are going to start, so I can see the smiles on your faces because and these smiles are simply reflecting, sir, why you are actually uh, going through this particular chapter. We already know all the nitty and gritty of this particular chapter. You are absolutely right and I do agree with you and your words are no doubt about that. But in spite of that, we are still going to do this chapter as part of the syllabus, number one. Second, it's in spite of the fact that it's simple, it's pretty long. And secondly, uh, it, the fact, uh, no, uh, without taking any credit of your knowledge regarding this particular what we call chapter, we are still going to take uh, the issues right from the scratches as we normally do. Correct? So a little bit of patience you need to show regarding this because even I know that uh, when something is known to somebody, uh, sometimes it becomes pretty difficult to maintain the intensity. Correct? So better you should not ignore this one uh, in spite of the fact that you have tremendous amount of knowledge and great background regarding this particular chapter but in spite of that i'm very sure that you are going to learn uh, something extra correct so issue of share capital now first of all let me write first of all the name of the chapter this is the one is accounting for issue of share capital i'm simply writing issue of share capital of course under accounts, we are concerned with accounting for issue of share capital. So, what is the theme of this particular chapter? As far as theme of this particular chapter is concerned, that itself is the that itself is suggested by the name of the chapter. Accounting for issue of share capital simply denotes that when a company raises the finance through issue of shares, correct? Then how the entry how the entity or the company is going to record such transactions. And what sort of accounting, what we call uh, methodologies, which we may have to adopt, and what sort of accounting issues which we may have to face. So that's exactly is the theme of this particular chapter. Issue of share capital. You know better than I actually that company form of business is the only form of business, correct? Among all the what we call forms of business, there is sole proprietorship, partnership, com and company form of uh, business. As I just told you, in that uh, company form of business is the only form of business wherein actually law gives a right to the entity that it can raise the capital from the public through issue of shares. Correct? Remember one thing a company can raise the finance through issue of debentures and bonds also but that is covered later on because in this particular chapter we are simply going to confine and concentrate on issue of share capital. As we know that in order to raise the finance, a company normally issues what we call shares. When I say a company normally issues shares, it means we are issuing the shares to the public. Remember one thing. So that is the reason this particular chapter more or less is concerned with public limited company. You need to understand this in the initial stages itself. We are not talking about one man company. We are not talking about private company. We are not talking about any other or simply company guaranteed company which is guaranteed and simply we are talking about what we call those companies which are offering the shares to the public is it clear to you so issue of share capital that mean directly or indirectly we are talking about public limited company because generally the public limited company raises finance through issue of shares now as a moment ago i was talking about this particular fact that under issue of share capital basically we are concerned with the accounting what we call aspects and how the accounting unfolds that is already known to you but in spite of that we are going to start from the scratches suppose there is a company correct you need not require to write it goes without saying because these are the rough sheets suppose there is a company and this company wants to raise let us say rupees 10 lakh worth of share capital this company wants to raise 10 lakh worth of share capital from the public 
and for the same this company offered let us say let us say 1 lakh shares 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each each share is of rupees 10 each this is the total share capital which this company wants to raise in fact this is the amount of capital which this company wants to raise and the and this particular amount of capital shall be raised by issue of shares so company is going to issue 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each correct so 1 lakh is the number of share and the face value this value is also known as face value nominal value correct so 1 lakh shares we are offering to the public for rupees 10 this company intends to raise 10 lakh for the same company is offering 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each number one now when these shares will be offered to the public generally for the same as you know better than i actually but that company gives a prospectus floats a prospectus in the market wherein actually company invites the public to subscribe its shares anyway so company is offering one lakh shares of rupees 10 each to the public quite of quite obviously now the general public is going to apply for these shares apply for these shares now for a while you presume you are one of the investor who are interested in buying these shares and let us say you bought 1000 shares you are interested in buying 1000 shares of this company what did i say i say that out of 1 lakh shares you are also interested in buying the shares of this particular company and you are interested in buying 1000 shares of this company similarly there will be other investors in the market who will be interested in buying the shares of the company so we want to keep the discussion very simple if you are interested in buying 1000 shares of this particular company how much logically you would need to pay to this particular company what amount you should logically pay to pay to this particular company if you are interested in buying 1000 shares you let me know of that sir we are interested in buying 1000 share and because face value of the share is 10 so logically we are supposed to pay 10000 rupees absolutely right you are supposed to pay rupees 10,000. But as you know again, when an applicant or when an investor is buys the share of a particular company or subscribes the shares of a particular company, he need not require to pay the full amount. Are you getting my point or not? So even though you are supposed to pay what we call 10,000 rupees, you are not going to pay entire 10,000 in one lump sum. In fact, initially you will pay application money first you are going to apply to the company you will have to fill the application and in the application you will write sir i am interested in buying 1000 shares and the face value of share is one and total value is 10000 it means you are telling to the company well sir i am going to pay you 10000 rupees but the company will tell you you need not require to pay 10000 in one lump sum you pay us at the time of application only rupees 2 let us say let us say application rupee is 2 generally we will see and you know better than i the face value of the share generally is divided into what we call different installment generally the first installment is known as application money second installment is known as allotment and another one is known as call money even call money is subdivided into first call second call and third call total there could be five installment you can say that way around so initially when you will apply for the share you are going to pay rupees 2000 only later on the company after some time the company will then scrutinize all the applications from all the applicants who like you must have applied for the shares so after scrutinizing the application let us say company decides that you should be allotted 1000 shares so a letter of allotment will be sent to you and company will tell that now onwards you are the shareholder of our company that means directly or indirectly you have become the owner of the company when letter of allotment is received by an applicant then he becomes the shareholder or member of the company you can participate in the what we call meetings of the company and you have the voting rights no doubt about that and you have also right to assess the books of the company so this is the first installment which you pay at the at the time of application and second installment is generally paid when company will send you uh, send you a letter of allotment 
Letter of allotment means company is telling two things to you. Now you have become our shareholder and it is also time for you to pay us the next installment. Let us say allotment money is rupees 5. So when you will receive the letter of allotment, you will also have to pay to the company rupees 5000. So out of 10,000, now you have paid 7,000. And then finally, company will ask you to pay the call money whensoever company would need the finance. Company will ask you to pay the remaining amount. Let us say remaining amount is by way of call and remaining amount is let us say this much. So 3,000. So that is how you are going to pay 10,000 rupees. What I want to say is that when a company actually issues share capital, company never ever ask the money in one lump sum although in rare cases it could be a possibility but generally company is not going to ask the entire money from the applicants as I said at the time of application so general process is that first of all the investors are going to apply for the shares and their applications will be scrutinized when they will apply for the share they will pay along with the applicants some application money and then after their application is accepted, then they will become the member of the company, shareholder of the company, owner of the company, you can say so. And then you will also have to pay to the company the allotment money. And after that, company can, company will call the remaining amount from you and which you will have to pay to the company. So this is the general process which you are already aware of. I'm not telling that you are not aware of all these things. So this is how we will have to move. And as far as entries and, and other aspects are concerned, very easy it is not a tough at all in fact the question number one i have framed it is actually a sort of demonstration question just to open the chapter so quite heavy notes you can see why these notes are very heavy you can see the length and breadth of these notes correct you might be served this much yes and uh, actually last few pages i have given you nearly 103 multiple questions also mcqs multiple choice questions also correct which you will have to attend all these are can you see here these are the mcqs so mcqs along with answers now actually i have given to you so which you will have to do all these pages are filled up with what we call mcqs also and, these, and some question all questions have been given to you in the solved manner so first we are going to pick up what we call the First question, now open down the notes and section 1 now. This is section 1 we are going to start up with to open the chapter. Correct? Just have a look over this question. It's a very simple question. You need not require to, honestly speaking, you need not require to at all. Note down this one. Correct? Indian Rains Limited issued 50,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each on 1-1-2021 for public subscription. Whenever you will go through the question, make a habit of, although these are very elementary things, and all these things are already known to you, I have accepted. But in spite of that, please allow me to start with the, what we call, the scratches. Correct? You may feel bored in the initial stages, no doubt about that, but you can't help, but we can't help it. We have a habit of starting from the scratches, as I said. In this case, this company is offering 50,000 shares, 50,000 equity shares, correct? 50,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each. This company is offering or issuing 50,000 shares of rupees 10 each, correct? Of course, it is known as issued share capital. It is known as issued share capital. What is issued share capital? Issued share capital means that part of the capital, that part of the authorized share capital or nominal capital which is issued to the public, correct, for raising the finance. As we know that besides the issued share capital, there is nominal capital or authorized share capital. Nominal capital or registered capital we also call it. Registered capital and sometimes we call it authorized share capital. What is nominal authorized or issued share capital? Generally, let us say authorized share capital of this company is 70,000 into 10. Let us say for simplicity's sake. Correct? Actually, nominal capital, registered capital and authorized capital. These are the three terms which we use synonymously. The reason being is that it is called nominal capital because it exists only for the namesake. Why it exists only for the namesake? Because never ever company will issue 
entire 70,000 shares to the public or uh, or what we call number of share with which the company is registered. It is called as registered capital simply because with this capital company is generally registered and it is called as authorized share capital because this is the maximum capital which the company can issue to the public. But company never ever what we call issues the total number of share with which it is actually authorized to issue. Is it clear to you? That is why it is also known as nominal capital because it exists only for the namesake. And that part of the authorized share capital which is issued to the public to raise finance, that is known as issued capital. In this question, we, we haven't been given nominal capital. Question simply says that Indian Reins Limited offered 50,000 50, shares to the public. So this is the what we call issued capital. Indirectly, it also means company wants to raise rupees 5 lakh from the public. Company wants to raise 5 lakh from the public. Now, question has further given to you how this company is going to raise 5 lakh, how this company is going to receive this 5 lakh. Question states that payable as rupees 2 on application, 5 on uh, five on allotment and 3 on first and final call. 3 on first and final call. First call itself is the final call. So you can say that this 5 lakh will be received in 3 installment. First installment, second installment and, three, and third installment. As I told you, the first installment amount is rupees 2 and it is also known as application money because question has stated rupees 2 on application and 5 is on allotment. This is our second installment and third installment is call money, rupees 3 by way of call. That means when you are going to apply or when the company will receive the application, company will receive 50,000. Total number of shares are 50,000. Company will receive 50,000 into 2, 1 lakh. Is it clear to you? Similarly, at the time of allotment, company will receive 50,000 into 5, that is 2 lakh 50,000. And similarly, to call money, company will receive 50,000 into 3, that is equal to 1 lakh 50,000. Why I am actually stressing so much upon it? Because these things are going to play important role later on. Because you know each and everything. I also know. Now if I am going to ask you a very simple question. In this case, what is the amount of share capital? What is the amount of share capital? Sir, 50,000 into 10. 50, rupees 5 lakh. Right, absolutely. This is the capital company wants to raise. Now, we can say that in this share capital, in this share capital of 5 lakh, company will receive 1 lakh by way of first installment, 2 lakh 50,000 through second installment, and through third installment, we are going to receive 1 lakh 50,000. Total amount, we are going to receive 5 lakh. Now, we have to learn this way, that out of this share capital of 5 lakh, we may say, total share of first installment, that is application money, in the total share capital of 5 lakh is 1 lakh. Share of allotment in the share capital is 2 lakh 50. And share of call in the share capital is 1 lakh 50. You have to keep these things in your mind. Now, second important point is that this is the common question. The common question is that company has issued 50,000 to the uh, shareholders. And one share is of rupees 10. And this amount is being called this way, 2 on application, 5 on allotment and 3 on call. This is the general question and I have divided this question into part. The part 1 case A says, director received 50,000 application and accepted each one. That means we have offered 50,000 shares and we have also received 50,000 applications. Generally, it never happens in practical life. In practical life, generally we are going to receive more what we call uh, more application than what we are issuing. How many shares we are issuing? 50,000. How many applications we are receiving? We are receiving only 50,000 applications. Anyway, good thing is that in this case, we are receiving equal amount of what we call application. So, now we have to pass the entries. And you know better than actually I how to pass the entries. Isn't it or not? Okay, you let me know what will be my first entry. This is question number one and case number A. First, we are dealing with section one. Let me write section one. Now, you can start writing if you feel so. Otherwise, simply you can pay attention. Section one. Under section one, just wait. Let me actually fix up the sheets. 
sometime you know in this methodology keeping the sheets is a problem question number 1.1 1.1 means first question of section 1 and even under it first of all we are picking up case a right now you let me know the entry company is offering 50,000 shares and the first installment is application money what rupees to what will be your first entry receipt of application this is what you use to write isn't it or not receipt of application money first of all you are going to receive the application money now you let me know what will be your entry receipt of application money entry will be bank account debit bank account debit to share application account share application account how many shares how many applications we are receiving we are receiving 50,000 applications we are offering 50,000 shares and we are receiving 50,000 applications. So all in all, we are receiving 1 lakh rupees. V means the company. The shareholder will deposit the amount in the bank of the company. Which the company will mention that in which bank you will have to deposit the amount. So when we say bank account debit to share application, it means actually the entity is receiving the amount correct by way of application also you should know that bank and application both are personal account remember one thing correct so debit the receiver credit the giver is the rule which you are applying after some time company will then hold the meeting wherein the directors of the company will assess all the application and they will check the application in each respect they will try to find out whether each application is what we call duly filled up or not once they are satisfied then they will allot the shares and then they will allot the what we call uh, shares to the members uh, to the applicants so in this case it is clearly written that 50,000 application and accepted each one so now all the applications have been accepted so now we are in a position and can say firmly from the perspective of the company that we have 50,000 members correct once the share applications are assessed and letter of allotment is sent then another entry was passed and narration of this entry will be like this transfer of application money transfer of application money whatever your application money was there transfer of application money towards to share capital now we will transfer this application money to the share capital account correct when I will transfer share application money to share capital account, so the application account will get wiped out, correct? And my entry will be share application account to debit. Share application account to debit. Rupees 1 lakh. To share capital account. To share capital account generally for every installment you will have to pass two entry one for receiving and another one for transferring transferring it to capital as you know correct so in this case there are three stages first one was with respect to application and now the next stage is with respect to allotment however in case of applications as you know First, we receive the application money and then we transfer to the what we call share capital. But after this stage, from the next one, that means allotment onwards, allotment and onwards, we will first of all make pass an entry. We call it due entry. For example, now company has decided that we are going to receive allotment money from the members. So company will ask the members to pay the allotment money and because company knows that it has 50,000 members and each member will have to pay at the rate of 5, in this case allotment rate is 5. 
So company is sure that it is going to receive 250,000. Correct? So our next entry will be allotment money due. This is our second stage entry. Allotment money due. Allotment money due. Allotment money due. So in this case, we are going to pass the entry like this. Share allotment account debit. Share allotment account debit. Fifty thousand shares. We have fifty thousand shares, and allotment rate is five. So two lakh fifty thousand is due from the members on second installment. You can say it that way. Two share capital. You can see that in this stage, in case of application, first we received the application, then we made it a part of share capital. However, from application onwards, that means from allotment, first of all, we are going to pass the due entry and then we are going to receive the amount. In fact, what happens in case of installments other than the application, in case of installments other than the application, Company first will make the what we call amount due call and then company is going to receive the entry. For example, if company needs what we call more company, company will ask the shareholder to pay allotment. Similarly, company will ask the shareholder to pay call money and so on. So first we are making the what we call call and when we are making the call, we are going to pass the due entry. For example, in this case, company wants to call the allotment money. So the moment we are going to call the allotment money, we will make it a part of share capital. There are two reasons. One, we know that now we have 50,000 members and we also know that allotment is a part of share capital and we also know that shareholders will have to pay the amount. So better to what we could transfer it immediately. So share allotment money account debit to share capital. Now we are going to receive the allotment money. Receipt of allotment money. Receipt of allotment money. Now we are going to receive. When we are going to receive, we are going to pass this entry bank account debit. Bank account debit. 50,000 into 5 if you want to show. Two share allotment account. Two share allotment account. Two lakh fifty thousand. Two lakh fifty thousand. Correct. Similarly, this is our second stage entry regarding allotment. Now third stage entry with respect to call money. And again, almost we are going to repeat these two entry. Call money due. Share call account debit. Share call money due. Let me write the narration also. Entry will be share call account debit. Or you can also write it this way. Share first and final call account debit. Because our first call itself is the final call. Share call account debit. 50,000 shares. And rate is 3. 1,50,000. Two share capital account. Two share capital account. So now we will ask the shareholders to pay the call money. Generally, when company makes the installment due, generally time of 15 days is given. So just for knowledge sake, now we shall receive the amount receipt of call money. Receipt of call money. Receipt of call money. Now you are going to receive the amount. So your entry will be simple one. Bank account debit to share call account. So every installment has got two entry. It is as simple as that. 
टू शेयर कॉल अकाउंट वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ना दिस इज द मोस्ट सिंपलेस्ट बट दिस वॉज इंटेंडेड टू गिव यू अ ब्रीफ आइडिया रिगार्डिंग द एंट्रीज विच ऑलरेडी यू नो बट जस्ट टू रिमाइंड द सेम यू कैन से नाउ वी विल टेक केस बी केस बी इज गिवन इन द नेक्स्ट डीट दैट मीन क्वेश्चन इज सेम Company is offering fifty thousand shares. Number one, application money is two, allotment money is five, call money is three. But now the question is: Director received sixty thousand application and decided to reject the excess application money. Now this time, case two: How many applications we are receiving? We are receiving sixty thousand application. Case B. In the last case, we received fifty thousand application, and now we are receiving sixty thousand application. Is it clear to you or not? As you know, again better than I, when a company receives more application than what it is offering, it is known as case of over subscription. We are offering fifty thousand application. How many shares we are offering or issuing? We are issuing fifty thousand shares. How many applications we are receiving in this case? We are receiving sixty thousand applications. Now, what is written in the question? Question has further says. Question further states that where is the question actually? Case B. It is written here. Case B says that director received sixty thousand application and decided to reject the excess application. Now, this line you need to take care of. and because there is tendency among the student to ignore the real impact of this line read the line carefully what did the directors did they rejected the excess application money what is the amount of excess application money number of excess application 60000 total excess application i am talking about 10000 right that mean out of 60000 applications 10000 applications have been rejected what we mean by rejected rejected means these applicants were not given a single shares suppose one shareholder applied for 10000 and he did not get a single what we call share then it would be termed as rejection rejection means company did not allot any shares to these shareholders or these applicants should i say so it means these are the shares which we are offering we are receiving 60000 application but out of 60000 10000 applicants were not given a single share so that is the reason these 10000 applicants shall be considered as rejected it means because we know when the applicants apply for the shares they will have they must have paid the application money and application money is too so quite obviously what we have received from them extra will have to be refunded because these shareholder did not get a single share they were completely rejected and their amount which they have paid will have to be refunded no doubt about that so this is a case of over subscription first of all you need to understand this way round now in this case how my entries will run that also you need to understand in this case first of all when i am going to pass my first entry my first entry will be with respect to application money correct receipt of application receipt of application money receipt of application money when i am going to receive the application money what will be my entry in this case remember one thing henceforth whenever you are going to pass this entry receipt of application money you should always pay attention to the number of applications which you have received you have received in this case 60000 applications and 2 is the what we call rate 60000 into 2 will make it 120000 120000 correct to share application account bank account debit to share application account so this is the entry which you are going to pass is it clear to you then you will pass the next entry 
and now onwards you need to write the narration of the next entry this way round adjustment of adjustment of share application money share application money towards capital as we know that some portion of the application will be transferred to capital and some portion in this case will be refunded because 10,000 applications have been rejected, isn't it or not? Towards refund. You should not forget the initial discussion when I was talking about this is where I did that discussion regarding this very simple question. We are offering 50,000 shares of rupees 10 is. This is what exactly I said when I started this question. I also told you that company wants to raise 5 lakh. And casually I also told you that in the share capital of 5 lakh, share of application money is actually 1 lakh. And it will never ever change because we are offering 50,000 shares. And 50,000 into 2, this is the amount. So we can say that in the in total share capital of 5 lakh, share of first installment application money is 1 lakh and so on. Why I am reminding you all this point? Because when I am going to pass the entry, the this point will hold very good. See here. My next entry will be share application account debit. Share application account debit. Share application account debit. You have credited application by 120 so you are going to debit it by 120 then i will write to share capital some portion of share application money must be transferred to share capital and whenever we are going to transfer to capital we will always have to look at the number of shares which we offered which we issued we means the company company has issued 50000 shares so 50,000 into 2, that means share of application money in the share capital is on 50,000 share at the rate of 2, 1 lakh. So, share of first installment share application money in the share capital is 1 lakh. And now we have transferred application money 1 lakh out of 120 to the capital. And rest of the money has been refunded. So, I am going to write to bank account. In fact, when I write to bank, it means I am writing the entry share application account debit to bank account. This is the entry for refund because when we receive, we pass the entry bank account debit to share capital. And now because we have refunded the amount, we are simply going to reverse the entry. So 10,000 applicants have been rejected and into 2, so 20,000 I am going to refund. This is the entry. Rest of the entry will remain same. For example, if I am going to pass allotment entry, allotment money due, allotment money due. When I will pass this entry, my entry will be share allotment account debit. Share allotment account debit. Total number of shares, 50,000. Allotment rate is 5. 2,50,000. Whenever we are going to transfer something to capital, always look at the number of shares issued, 50,000 shares. Share allotment account debit to share capital. Because we have transferred the allotment money to share capital and we haven't received it yet, that is why it is written share allotment money due. We have all we have already transferred it to capital, but we haven't received it. That is why we have written due. Now we are going to receive this money. So we are going to write receipt of allotment money. Receipt of allotment money. When I am going to receive the allotment money, my entry will be bank account debit to share allotment account. Bank account debit to share allotment account. Bank account debit to share allotment account two lakh fifty two lakh fifty.
Similarly, you can pass the entry for call. For example, when you are going to pass the entry for call, your entry will be call money due. Call money due. Call money due means you have you are making the call as part of the capital. Share call account debit. Total number of issued shares are fifty thousand. Rate is three. So one lakh fifty thousand. Two share capital account. Two share capital account. One lakh fifty thousand. Correct. And now we'll pass the final entry for receipt. Receipt of call money. Bank account debit. Two share call account. One fifty, one fifty. This is the entry you will have to write. Question number one point one, case B. Now we are picking up question number one point one, case number C. Same question. Fifty thousand shares are being offered to the public, correct? And fifty thousand applications are being offered to the public. And two is the uh, allotment money. Five is the uh, sorry. Two is the application money. Five is the allotment money. Three is the call money. And now the question states: KC director received eighty thousand applications and decided to allot share among all applicants. Now, first of all, it goes without saying that. Let me take the rough sheets once again to make you understand better. Now, in this case, what is happening? How many shares? KC. How many shares we are offering to the public? 50,000 shares. Shares offered. You are offering or issuing 50,000 shares to the public. How many applications you are receiving? Applications received. 80,000 applications you have received. And what is the decision of the director in this case? First of all, you let me know. Is this question is of oversubscription or not? Yes, even the last case was also of oversubscription. But here we rejected some application. But here we are not rejecting any applicants. Here the directors of the company is taking a very simple decision. What decision they are taking? They are allotting all these 50,000 shares, they are allotting all these 50,000 shares among all the applicants. Among all the applicants. What does it mean? It means every shareholder is getting some shares. That means none of the shareholder is rejected. Please pay attention. Suppose if you are applying for 1,000 share in a particular company, and if, you, if the company will not allot you any share, then it will become a case of rejection. Then it will become a case of rejection. However, if you will get a single share, let us say you were applying for 1000 share and you got one share, but it cannot be called this time as a case of rejection. You cannot say in this case that 990 share, 99 shares rejected. No, nothing like that because even though you applied for 1000 share, you still got one share, but you are a shareholder of the company. Are you getting my point or not? You are a shareholder of a company, so you are not rejected. So the meaning of rejection should be absolutely, absolutely clear. In the last case, when I said that 10,000 applications have been rejected, it means those applicants didn't get a single share from the company. However, here what is happening? All in all, there are 80,000 applications and companies allotting 50,000 shares among all 80,000 shares. As you know better than I, it is known as pro rata allotment. Pro rata allotment means when lesser number of shares are allotted among higher number of applicants. So it means, put it in simple words, it means everyone who is applying for 8 share will, is getting 5 shares. 
It also means if you are applying for 800 shares, you are getting 500 shares. Are you getting my point or not? So in this particular ratio, company has allotted the share. Important point is this, please pay attention. Suppose you applied for 8 share and you are getting 5 shares. Pro rate or 8 we call it. It, it is not a case of rejection first of all. Why it is not a case of rejection? Because even though you got, you didn't get entire 8 share, but at least you got some shares. So you are the shareholder of the company. So you are not rejected. First of all, it cannot be called as a case of rejection. This you should, this you should know and should keep in mind at least for the upcoming questions. Now what happens when there is pro rata allotment? We need to understand this also. Suppose you applied for 8 share. You must have paid application money of rupees 2. 16 rupees you must have paid. You were applying for 8 shares. Let us say you must have paid at the rate of 2 rupees 16 in total as application money. When you were applying for the share, you weren't in the know that you wouldn't be able to get entire 8 shares. Because of the oversubscription, company told you that we are not in a position to get, allot you 8 shares, but we are allotting you 5 shares. Since you have been allotted 5 shares, logically application money you should have had paid rupees 10 only. Are you getting my point or not? You paid application money on 8 share thinking that you will get the 8 share. But there was heavy subscription. Company could not allot you 8 shares. Company allotted you. Company did not dissatisfy you completely. Company told you that we are not in a position to allot you 8 shares. But we are going to allot you 5 shares. So now you may think actually that you have paid 16. But you should have logically paid 10. Because you got 5 shares and application money is 2. So, amount should have been 10. It means you have paid rupees 6 extra. Are you getting my point or not? This is the extra money which you have paid to this particular company. And this time, this 6 which you have paid will not be refunded to you. Why? Because you haven't been rejected. You are still a shareholder of the company and you are supposed to pay some future calls to the company. Now, what the company will tell you, company will tell you, we do understand that you have paid us 16 rupees as application money. And we also understand that your application money should have been 10 because you were allotted only 5 shares. We also know, we also know means the company is telling to the shareholder that we are in the know and we also know that you have paid us 6 rupees extra, but you need not require to worry about it. Because when the next call will, when the next call will be made, let us say next call, that is second call. When company will make the next call, how much this shareholder need to pay? Because this shareholder is having 5 share and coincidentally, the call rate is also 5. So logically, you are supposed to pay 25 on the next call to the company because you are, you are having 5 shares and the call rate of the next call is 5. So you are supposed to pay rupees 25 to the company. But the company will tell, although 25 you should pay us, but your 6 is already extra is available with us. So that is the reason in the next call actually you pay us only 90. Are you getting my point or not? In case of rejection, first of all, what is the meaning of rejection? In case of rejection, shareholder will not get a single share. In that case, the money must be refunded. But in case of pro rata allot allot allotment, Whatever excess money is there, we need to find out what is the excess money. Quite obviously, excess application is 30,000. Difference of 50 and 80,000, that is 30,000. This 30,000 is nothing but extra applications. But these applications haven't been rejected. So, 30,000 into 2, 60,000, this is the total extra money company has received similar to this rupees 6, which this shareholder has paid to the company. And since all the shareholders have been allotted some shares, so company is not going to refund 60,000 to them. Company will simply adjust this 60,000 in the next call. Is it clear to you or not? That is the reason why I am stressing upon the fact that you need to understand the meaning of excess rejection pro rata deeply. So these are the rough sheets. Now I can actually go through this case also. Case C, isn't it?
KC. Now in this case, my entry will be, first entry will be, receipt of application money bank account debit now you let me know how much amount should i write please let me know how many applications we are receiving 80000 the first entry must be with the number of applications which you have received in this case 80000 applications you have received don't forget it rate of application is 2 so 160000 total actually you are receiving from the shareholders isn't it or not 1,60,000. Now, adjustment of application money. When we say adjustment, it means we have to adjust the application money completely. Adjustment of application money towards capital. Capital means share capital. And Next call, we are adjusting this time application money not only towards capital but also some portion will be adjusted towards the next call. Share application account debit, you are receiving total 1,60,000. Two, share capital account. I have already told you the share of application money on share capital will be 50,000 into 2 because 50,000 shares have been issued by the company. So share of application money in the share capital cannot be more than 1 lakh. In the last case, some portion of application money was refunded and at that time we wrote to bank. But in this question, we are not going to write anything here to bank because we are not refunding anything. However, we are going to write the next call. The next call amount is, next call is actually allotment money. You can also write it calls in advance. Allotment money. The name of the next call is allotment money. So that means 60,000 extra which we have received logically on 30,000 shares, 30,000 applications at the rate of 2, this will be adjusted towards the next call. When I say it will be adjusted towards the next call, what does it mean? See here. First, let me write call money due. Sorry, allotment money due. Allotment money due allotment money due entry will be share allotment account debit share allotment account debit because i am making a due entry it means directly or indirectly i am making the installment part of capital and I have told you now several times that whenever you are going to transfer something to capital, always consider the total number of share issued. You have issued 50,000 shares and call rate is this. So total call money due is 250. We write call money due, but it means share of allotment in the share capital is 250. Since you haven't received it, that is why we are writing it due. So you are supposed to receive 2,50,000. You means the company. So company is supposed to receive 2,50,000. Now we will receive. Receipt of allotment money. Now we are going to receive the allotment money. What will be my entry? See here, bank account debit. I am supposed to receive 2,50,000. Similar to the shareholder, when I was talking about this particular case, 
were dead. Anyway, once again I will repeat. Suppose there is a shareholder who applied for 8 share. Correct? He paid the application money on 8 share. That is 16, but he should have paid 10 because he was allotted 5 shares. That means rupees 6 is extra. When the next call will come, company will tell him that we have allotted you 5 share. And rate of allotment is also 5. So total amount due from you is 25. But we have already received 6 from you, which we haven't refunded you. And we did not refund you because we know that you are supposed to pay us in future. That, that is the reason why we did not refund you earlier what we call 6 rupees. Now we are adjusting it here in the next call. So pay us 90. Similarly here, total due amount is 250. But out of 250, company has already received allotment money 60,000. That is what my point is. Are you getting my point or not? So this amount which you adjusted towards allotment directly means you are considering as if this much of allotment money has already been received. So, 250 minus 60,000, 190,000. So, whenever the question will be of prorata, you need to understand that amount will not be refunded. It will be adjusted towards the next call. And when we say we are going to adjust it in the next call, it means when you are going to pass this entry, you will have to exercise the caution. Bank account debit to share allotment account. That is 1,90,000. Correct? And call money as usual you are going to write. Share call account debit. To share capital. 50,000 shares. Of rupees 5 each. 2,50,000. Now we are going to receive. The set of. Call money. Bank account debit. Two share call account. So we are going to receive two lakh fifty. Is it clear to you or not? So, we will continue this, but in the next session. Hope now all the major points must have been recapped by you also. And although you know each and every aspect of this chapter, I, have, I sincerely accept it. But still, we have to do this chapter. So, shall meet you in the next session.